welcome to New Game Plus. I'm Tim, I'm joined by Donald. How are you? I think I am just about recovered from the massive weekend of fighting game hype that was the EVO Fighting Ta Game Championships. Yes, the first year of the championships that it was on ESPN. Two! Uh, two! Uh, I was on television here in Australia as yes. well, which is always fantastic to see esports breaking into mainstream. It was only Street Fighter that was on the TV, but it certainly brought in a lot of new people. The people that complain that it's not a sport. You're getting um, less and less than them. You're certainly getting some. Yeah. But like something like Street Fighter, it's easy for like someone who's not familiar with esports just to look and watch. You don't have to, like unlike Dota or League of Legends, yes. you don't need to know all the mechanics of the game. You just need to know that that lady is beating up that dude. There's some life bars. First one to fall down loses. And that's Everyone's basically. yelling. Yes. Um, and of course, it's always funny to see Things like professional poker players saying it's not a sport and shouldn't be on TV. And people but, complaining even though, let's see, ESPN has also been known to broadcast hot dog eating contests, spelling bees, darts, yes. you know, sports. Yes, but the, the main thing to come out of it is you have a lot of people tuning in going, mm. I've never seen this before and now I'm hooked. I've been watching all day. That's the type of people that we want to really shine a light on and say that, hey, this is bringing in new people into what we love. It also helped that this year's EVO had some fantastic grand finals, both Smash Brothers Melee and Street Fighter V. They had bracket recents, and at any point, any one of the grand finalists could have taken home the trophy. Yes, some fantastic games that rounded out the weekend. There were some other games as well, like Guilty Gear, Pokken, uh, Tekken. Mortal Kombat X. Yes, uh, which Sonic Fox always wins, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a thing he tends to do a lot. <laughs> yes, but th in this episode, we do take a look at some video games. Yes, we look at Earth Defense Force. Well, they look at Earth Defense Force because I don't like giant spiders. Yes, Shane and Jason take a look at the new world of Twitch. And we also, in preparation for the Grand Prix Ma uh, Sydney for Magic the Gathering, we go back to GP Melbourne and talk to some of the Magic pros that came down. But first up, let's go into our first review. So Jason, what have I told you to the people who made Limbo this divisive game, to say the least, made a new game, and it's probably one of the best games of the year so far? Yeah, people said that about Limbo, and Limbo was garbage. Can we just put that out there right now, that Limbo was garbage. It, it played horribly, I got what they were trying to do, the stupid permadeath thing, like the stupid like cheap death thing, I should say, was terrible. Uh, I got it, but coming off Braid, it, you, it, was, it wasn't even comparable. wasn't even comparable. Fair enough. So it's going to be a very hard sell for you over the next two minutes. Okay, let's give it a sh Well, I'm, I'm not here to sell you. I'm here to sell the audience on this little game called Inside, which is available now on Xbox Live and PC. So one thing straight away I've noticed, it has very striking aesthetic. And there's one thing I'll give Limbo is that it had that particular kind of art style. Yep. And it, it kind of played it right through. Like, it, yep. it committed to it. And this looks very similar. Like, the, the shades of color when the light hits it. Otherwise, it's very monotone and very dark. Mm -hmm. um, it, it seems that they've carried those aesthetics across at the very least. Right, and it's a beautiful looking game and they do the kind of the great thing that Limbo did was they tell their story through the world as opposed to, hey, here's a cutscene or hey, here's some audio diaries or any stuff like there's no cut, there's no cutscenes. Yeah, there's, there's, no, there's nothing that kind of takes you out of the yeah, game. There's there, no yeah. tutorials. Which, like, which yeah. again, always annoyed me about Limbo was because the gameplay itself wasn't that tight a, like, a thing. And so like in this one, I mean, does it have they fixed those mechanics? Because it really just played so badly that I could not get. Into I think it's tighter. Like I think they yeah. they fix up a lot of the problems I had with Limbo were just the cheap bullshit deaths that you didn't see because ha 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 screw you. There's less of that. It's yeah. still there, but it's still there is still some trial error, but it's less so. Like to me, more of it's just the puzzle design. Like it's a lot of really strong and interesting puzzle design, and then there's some stuff to, in the second half of the game which just is actually really just. I don't want to go into it too much because if you go, just I, th I think we got an email telling us not to go into it too exactly much. That too. But more or less, it's just, it's fascinating and it's weird and it's just something that I wasn't expecting at all. So knowing my disdain for Limbo, knowing, knowing that I think that it is perhaps one of the most overrated games of the last five years. Yep. Do you still recommend Inside to me? There are worse ways to spend four hours. Now, Shaney, there is a 20th anniversary for a particular game coming up. Can mm -hmm. you guess what it is? I would actually guess Corpse Party. 
that was actually a pretty damn good guess because that's what, gonna, what we're going to be looking at. So the game has recently released on Steam after about being um, translated in English for over four or five years. Mm -hmm. um, has come out on a myriad of different platforms on the PSP, um, on the iOS, and originally came out 20 years ago on the PC-98 to cult acclaim. Yep. So, Corpse Party, the general lowdown is that you have a bunch of uh, bunch of teenagers along with their poor teacher dragging along to this occult practice where things go horribly, horribly wrong and they get transported by an earthquake to Heavenly Host Elementary School which uh, was unfortunately plagued by all sorts of kidnappings and gruesome deaths. So basically you're trapped into what it is called a closed space, so, mm -hmm. or closed spaces because there's more than one, so everyone gets into their own I guess universe and everyone can inter like slightly interact into the other people's universes but you don't know exactly how you can do it, how things run and it's all a mystery and a very much a murder mystery. Yes, definitely. And it's a bit, it's a bit kind of unique in, in a few ways. Considering it's 20 years old, there, yeah. there's like this interesting setup where everyone's working with each other in multiple dimensions. And let's let's start. So it's it's a bit of a hybrid of like a little bit of RPG elements mixed with adventure, and it's all like in this grid based structure. And basically, it is just a visual novel, though. There are puzzles here and there, but what you really are there for is the story. Mm -hmm. And the story is great, although this is the problem that comes up. It's the PC version. It's done isn't great with it, most of its like I guess graphics or a lot of its story visual storytelling. Mm -hmm. Like the PSP version, which was older, is slightly superior and that has animated scenes. And the new version that is actually coming on the 3DS will be even superior again. So it brings up the question: Is it actually even worth it? So for me in particular, I've been very lazy with the releases. Mm. I never played the PSP version and was looking forward to this as well. I say I'm a little bit disappointed in some areas. I mean, there are a few strengths with um, not having um, as, as good visuals. Like, yeah. the, like I said, the drawings aren't exactly up to snuff compared to the other versions of the um, of the release, like the PSP version. But the the imagine like making sure that you know you're you're letting your imagination do the talking. Where yeah. There's no graphic effects in particular. The dialogue makes you imagine these things, and that's yes. where most of it comes from. The dialogue is very very well written. Mm -hmm. It's a story that's been told multiple, multiple times over what? 20 years now, yes, basically. Yes. And it will be told again later this year. Yep. So if you haven't got into this game somehow and you don't want to wait three months for a probably superior version, mm -hmm. this version is probably great for you because it's easy to access. You're probably not going to be able to get the PSP version. So. It's, it lives or dies based on its narrative and thankfully it's good but this version probably isn't the definitive one. I'd probably say wait a little while until the, uh, the 3D Three version comes out. We are at the Melbourne Magic the Gathering Grand Prix. One of the really cool things about Grand Prix is that there are plenty of professional players, so you can really see the best of the best play. Let's go meet some. Uh, I'm Zen Takahashi and I'm from Auckland, New Zealand. David Mines from Brisbane. Uh, my name is Maitland Cameron. I'm Jason Chung and I'm from New Zealand. I'm Tomohara Saito from Japan. Nice to meet you. So I started playing Magic in about uh, 2011, I think, and um, I was pretty just average then. <laughs> well, when I was 11, I got this Yu-Gi-Oh! tattoo. <laughs> and I played that game for a while, really good. And then I played this other comic book game, Versus System. That got cancelled, so my last resort was Magic, and now I'm stuck with it. Well, definitely when I first started, I was pretty casual, but I was playing a couple of different games. At the time I was playing Pokemon and Magic, and, and uh, yeah, I, I wanted PDQ back then when I was a kid, and that sort of gave me the jolt again to want to start playing. It wasn't until when I was about 15 that I travelled for my first tournament, and that was a big stepping stone because I actually like left my hometown to play in a tournament. I've always always been really competitive at whatever I do, so when I started playing Magic, you know, like, it wasn't very long until I was very into um, wanting to achieve at the highest level, yeah. I think I actually got more sucked into like the competitive side of it because I wanted to be good. Uh, it wasn't like uh, suddenly, oh, I'm quite good, I'll try and play big events. I wanted to be good and so I learned, like I just uh, jumped straight into some big tourneys and learned from there. The main thing that I did to kind of get better was watching a lot of magic streams on Twitch and um, just re and reading a lot of stuff on the internet and really focusing on what it was um, to get better each time. Oh, uh, 2006, Pro Tour Charleston winner. I tested one month without any work. Just practice one month all day. Uh, all day. Yeah. Uh, the first, my first project experience was a real sort of wake-up call. 
like um, at the time I was 15 years old, I was sort of a little bit of a cocky teenager, and I just like top eighted my second Grand Prix, and I was sort of coming in quite confident. And then I guess my first Pro Tour sort of like took me down to reality on just how hard the Pro Tour is. Like I went one five. Where are you, Carl? Uh, lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. <laughs> it's really versatile and it can be played in both like aggressive and control manner. Uh, and I've got these awesome like full art foil like lightning bolts that I, I play with. It's ninja of deep power. Yeah. Stealer of secrets or those sort of ophidian effects. I like draw extra cards from turn two. Yeah. Almost that, but 90% from picture. Yeah. Ninja or oh, ninja in magic. <laughs> I have. Big surprise there. Yeah. Probably Misty Rainforest. Oh, definitely uh, Liliana of the Veil. As a solid Jun player for about three years, and it's just by far the best card in the deck. Emrakal the Aeon's Torn. Yeah. Wally Thakta, and it was a card that didn't die to Lightning Bolt, which was the most popular removal spell at the time, and it could attack through Kitchen Finks, which was played in all the birthing pod decks and, deck and everyone was mocking me before the tournament. They're like, you're playing this vanilla creature, what are you doing? And I was like, don't worry guys, I'm pretty sure it's right. Melbourne GP was a lot of fun. Don't forget, Sydney GP is coming up in July. It's going to be a sealed event with Shadows of Innistrad. It'll be a brand new set. Really, really cool. Can't wait to see it. Kenny, do you remember the good old days of Twitch where it was only about gaming and that if you played Metal Gear Solid and the cutscenes went for too long, moderators came onto your chat and told you to start playing video games. Or if you like had visual novels, there's, there's things that like, you know, kind they of have, like They books, had little bits like, of games in They it. had little bits of games, but just like totally take yeah, off. Yeah. Unless you're a top streamer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 you know, the good old days of Twitch. Yeah. Well, they are long behind us. Yep. Because with the introduction of Twitch food, which I love Twitch food, don't get me wrong. Twitch social eating, because they need that Korean money. Yep. Now, we have... Twitch Republican National Convention. And the other side also. We've got National Convention. Collection. We've got both, which, sure, equality, whatever, but, like, why? Just, that is the main this one. This is the question, question, because, realistically, we all know that Twitch chat loves the old, the, the memes. I don't yeah. know if you're aware that stream monsters like to post memes in yeah. Twitch chat. Is that... Yeah, that's a, that's a thing, for some reason, right? yeah. So, I mean, we've got the Republican National Convention... I mean, how hard do you think that, that, like, do you think they just moderate? Do you think they just went R9K because it would have just been Make America Great Again? Well, I believe it was, like, slow mode, R9K, everything you could think of, because if you just look at that, how much actually viewership it actually got for some fucking reason, it was, like, the top viewership on Twitch yes. for some... Like, now, man, this is close. the thing you have to understand about Twitch, yeah. right? For the last, since the Amazon buyout, mm. they have moved away from being... Oh, it's, it's basically the extension of Justin TV, which is what it started as. Yeah. And it has become, effectively, its own channel. And, th and that is what they are pushing for. It is the, you know, They're trying to push it as a decent alternative to YouTube. The next thing yeah. they'll start working on is VODs. And when they finally nail the VODs, YouTube is actually in trouble. I think at least a little bit. Only issue is if they've got some sort of, you know, content ID. Oh, let's not go there. No, um, no, but let's go there. All right, let's go there. Because Facebook has now introduced their all version right. of content ID. Great. Yeah, so basically, if you upload a video to Facebook uh, that has similar themes, they actually say, oh, by the way, this we believe this is the property of blah. We are going to show it to them and see if it's okay with them for you to have it. If you would like to delete it now, we won't show it to them. Please choose what you want to do. Now, this happened to somebody that we know with Call of Duty footage with their voice in it. And it just went to some a random American guy who posts COD clips. So another, another great win for Content ID. And, the thing, and, and this is the thing with Content ID. Does, does seeing a Content ID claim, you know, say on a 26-minute television show with like a 10-second clip from a movie review... Oh, oh wait, 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 but, yeah, 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 yeah. Does that make you respect copyright more? Does it make you think, hmm, maybe I should respect copyright? Depending, I guess, if that show is a community show, or if it's Who making needs money, all the support they can get, or if they're making money off that show, and like, I guess, if you're going, if it's a community base, and they're all just doing it for the hell of it. Who would really care? Yeah, but you know what it doesn't do? It doesn't endear people to Viacom and Disney and all of these big bastards pushing their weight around because they can. Nobody's impressed with you. It's obvious the racket that you've set up. And, you know, if my voice mattered, then something <laughs> would be done about this. If but, my you know, voice mattered. But, you someday there'll be, we'll be like, we'll have like, you know, people beheading Mickey Mouse icons and like burning Pluto at the stake. But until that day, Pluto at the stake. fuck you, content ID. I'm sure that's a restaurant. Pluto at the stake.
My dearest Fariha, every mother hopes for a better life for her daughter. I was willing to fight and die for it. I taught you that there is nothing more important than protecting the ones you love. You grew up surrounded by heroes. They filled your head with stories of adventure and dreams of glory. And one day, you wanted to join them. But it was not the life I wanted for you. I never told you of the weight I carry from all those I killed to keep everyone safe. But I always did what was asked of me. Until one day, I could not take the life I needed to. I hesitated, and everything changed. The people who I was supposed to protect died, and I was left behind, gravely wounded. The world believed that I was dead. I thought perhaps that was for the best. I've lost so much in my life. I've said goodbye to so many friends. I've buried the ones closest to me. But for all that I have lost, I know that there are still people who need to be protected. So I cannot stop fighting. Not yet. Not while there are people still waiting for me. One day, I hope you'll understand. Your mother, Anna. Now we're finally seeing some new characters in Overwatch. I'm honestly surprised that they're releasing new characters so early in the game's life. Sure, the game is about two, three months old at this point, and this was when it took the world by storm. Of course, this was in a pre-Pokemon Go yes, world. Yes, yes. But now they have competitive matchmaking as well. You'd yeah. think that that would stave off people for a little while. Adding a character this early, I mean... People have jumped off to play Pokemon Go. Yes. But now, now's a good time to jump back in with the, the new character. And a support sniper isn't something that usually gets done. It's not something you typically associate with snipers or supports for that matter. Yeah. So it's, it's very indicative of the sort of design space that Blizzard wants to hit with the characters in this game. And it's interesting. Yes, uh, but... The main thing I want to see out of Overwatch is not not only new characters, is more game modes. Mm. Like, TF2 tried to expand what they were doing with new maps, new game modes. Uh, at the moment, the map pool feels a bit stale. So, I, I haven't played probably in the last week or so, um, but... You I'd like used to see to, more. You eventually get used to those maps, but as people take competitive mode more and more seriously, then yeah. they, they like having the the maps that they are. Like 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 Counter Strike, for instance. There is like an infinite amount of maps, but people just just go to the same small yeah, the ones number in the pools. Yeah, yeah. And, and games like Dota only have the one map, but yeah. the variation comes from the different heroes on the map and the strategies. But I'd like to see more of it with Overwatch. What I actually want to see from Overwatch is single player story content, because like with Anna's gameplay uh, story trailer it shows us so much about the world and yet we see none of it in the game so i want like i know many people who would love to see and play through those stories themselves now shane if i was to say to you what is the best game of the last 10 years what would you say i'd have to say in your mind, Earth Defense Force. Well, that's that wasn't the question. What was no. what was your? Well, well, I no one cares. The answer is Earth Defense Force. So Earth Defense Force is a series of games where you play a bunch of soldiers protecting Earth while well, defending Earth. You're a force of soldiers defending Earth uh, from Earth Defense Force? giant aliens who take different forms. So they take the form of ants and spiders and uh, giant Japanese hornets and like dragons and robots and Godzilla and Godzilla. Yeah. So like. Basically, the whole game revolves around you running around. It, it, it reminds me a lot of the old, the old-fashioned kind of um, side-scrolling shooters, except in 3D, right? Except you're killing lots of ants. You basically grind the hell out of it, pick up new weapons, pick up new items, and then use those weapons against the ants. And just it, basically, that's the whole game. It's basically a Monster Hunter clone that takes it in a different. Clone, angle. not clone. It came out before Monster. 
fine. It's a RPG slash... It's not even an RPG. You don't play a role. The only role you play is a, as a force defending Earth from ants. But basically, the reason we're bringing it up is because it recently came out in English on PS4, which as, is fantastic. As well as PC on Steam. PC on Steam. So, like, it's really expanded what like what platforms you can play it on. Mm. Because, you know, for a long time, the PS3 version was the inferior one when we had yeah. 2017 and 2020, uh, 2025. And now this is the updated version of 2025. So basically, the reason we bring it up, and I feel that it's important that we cover it with you, is that the game is fantastic. Don't let the, the kind of last-gen polys get you. Don't let, uh, like, really bad teammates uh, get, get you. Uh, it's a really fantastic game with a lot more depth than it looks like, even if it is... Basically, because you can be as cool as you want to be, flying up high, destroying like piles of giant ants. You don't seem impressed. I mean, like I can see where you're going at, but the, there is still issues on the PS4 version. If you're going to go there, there is still slowdown, which makes your day for some reason. Like you love the slowdown in PS4, okay. but you got some you got some mustard on your shirt. Just, just no. Like, the PC version is going to always be a lot fun, a lot much better, and it'll be a much more open space. And coming to a PC environment where it hasn't been before, yeah, it's a really, really good thing for the game. I, look, I, I think just more people playing it, yeah. I'm happy with, because it really, to me, is one of those... You know, we all have those kind of games that we know will never be AAA titles. They'll, they'll never be the, the standing beacons of what we aspire to be. Yeah, They're just good, wholesome old-fashioned fun yeah and to me that is what earth defense force has long been oh, well, like, no. it, it gets punishing but you build up to it as yeah. you start to unlock better and better weapons you don't feel like you're being ripped off the online scene is still surprisingly active even mm. for the old games so I, I don't know like any last thoughts Shania? I love the game but but you're the one I'm trying to convince you it's always always been a fun game that's it basically the thing that it's at its core like if you like fun you'll most likely like this game if you like fun you'll most likely like this game is it, is it safe to look now? Is yes. It, are the, yeah, are the, the spiders, spiders gone? gone? <laughs> oh, thank goodness for that. So many times that I've walked just into the various green rooms here at the studio. See, Jason. Oh, hi, Jason. Hi, spider game. <laughs> Goodbye, Jason. <laughs> and EDF is very well known for its giant alien Insects, spiders. spiders, yep. ants. Not, nothing that interests me, thank you very much. Actually, there is one thing about that interests me about Earth Defense Force. It's just, as Jason mentioned in the review, is the B-game element to it. It has no aspirations of being <laughs> a top-tier game. It That's just fine. does fine in its own strange little territory. Yes, because when people have been trying to do that recently, they've a lot of games have just failed miserably. They're yeah. trying to aspire to these uh, either indie darling titles and or big AAA titles, or and they, they want fall to be they in. want to be esports. Yes, yes. which yes. is that like, is the new thing as well. Yes, which which evolve famously faltered at. Yes, and uh, something like Grey Goo. Has anybody played Grey Goo? That was a big esport at E3, huh. and nobody plays it anymore. Then people just realise they really just want to play Red Alert 2 all over again. Oh man, that was a good game. <laughs> I do want to play that <laughs> over again. So go over there. <laughs> like, I'd almost like to see a resurgence of these B-grade games. We sort of get that with the more budget titles on Steam. Yes. But still, like, they still have, as you say, sort of an aspiration. Yeah, they still have that charm uh, for some of the games, especially when you're looking at some of the older re-release games as well. Yeah. But uh, that's it for this week. We've got some events coming up. Yes, we do. In, like, if you're watching this in Melbourne as we go to air, this Saturday is Grand Prix Sydney for your chance to play with the Eldritch Moon's Concealed Pool. And then the weekend after that is Magic the Gathering Pro Tour Sydney, where all the pros will come down and fight to be the best magic career in town I believe that's the technical term <laughs> yes it is until then do visit our website www.newgameplus.tv like us on facebook facebook.com slash newgameplustv follow our twitter and instagram at newgameplustv and subscribe to us on youtube and twitch we are newgameplustv one word no spaces thank you Donald thank you Tim we'll see you guys next week